Hey everybody, I'm really excited for this video because in this one we're going to be showing you how to paint a miniature for one of my absolute favourite games. This is a Lannister Guardsman for a Song of Ice and Fire the Miniatures game by Simon. Now this soldier forms the very core of the Lannister army and the methods and techniques we're going to show you in this will not only allow you to paint the Lannister Guardsmen but also the Halberdiers and Crossbowmen too. And in fact you'll be able to paint them just as I paint my very own army. So we really hope you enjoy this video, we'll see you at the desk. To paint your Lannister soldiers, the first thing you need to do, of course, is to undercoat them. And for these ones, what I recommend you use is a nice mid-tone that's quite a neutral colour and really easy to paint over with all the different colours we're going to be using. So a medium grey is perfect. I've used Mechanica Standard Grey from Citadel, but you can go for Uniform Grey from the Army Painter, or Zandri Dust is a great colour from Citadel as well. But either way, whatever colour you use, we are going to be painting completely over it, so the actual colour doesn't matter a great deal. Now the first colour we're going to begin with is the main one for these soldiers, which is that deep red for their surcoats, and for this I've chosen Corn Red from Citadel, a beautiful colour for this and really nice and opulent, perfect for Lannisters. To apply it, what you need to do is get hold of a larger brush, and I'm going to go for my trusty old medium base brush from Citadel, which I see an awful lot of use, so you see the bristles are fraying quite a bit. But for this first stage it doesn't matter whether I'm neat or not, so it's perfect for this kind of rough painting in. So as always I'm just going to get some paint onto my palette and then add a little touch of water to it. Then we are to thin the paint down so it's nice and smooth, and then it's just a matter of applying this all over that red surcoat. So this is the main body of the miniature, going all the way down to here, up across the chest here, and down the arms. Now there are some slashes in the sleeves, which we will paint later on, so don't worry about the detail then for the time being. But do make sure that you get down to the little end of the sleeve there that just goes along the elbow there, like that. With that red blocked in, we can now move on to the next base coat, which is going to be for all the black detail. And what we're going to do is pick out some of the leather like this, so that we get a bit of a layered effect with that and the brown. So it just helps separate them a little bit. I'm going to go for Corvus Black for this, which is a slight off black. It's actually a really dark grey, so it's great for adding a bit of shading to it later on. And to apply this, I'm going to be using my regiment brush from the Army Painter, which is a really good size for the kind of details that we're covering here. But should you need a smaller brush for a bit more fine detail, of course, just switch to a small one. So as always we're going to thin that paint down so it's nicely diluted and then it's just a matter of picking out all the areas that we want to be black. And to begin with I'm going to be looking for the under tunic. So you can see it poking through just here so all this area is going to be black down there. And then there's some other bits just poking through the red uniform as well. So we've got the little bits here on the slashes on the sleeves. You can see the little recesses for them. All you do is just run some of this black into that recess there like that. And this goes all the way around the sleeves like this. Should you make any mistakes just neaten up with corn red before you move on, but you can see there's just these parts poking through. Now also it appears with the elbows, so we need to paint there as well, and also I'm going to paint the gloves as well to separate them a bit from the sword, which is going to be quite warm and brownish around there, including the grip. So there we go. Finally we just need to make sure we paint the boots black as well. There we are, the black details now also blocked in, and we can start adding some more base coats to the miniature, all of which are going to be using the same technique as what we've just been doing, so we're going to run through them quickly for you now. First of all, what we need is some dried bark, and this is going to be for all the brown leather detail in the miniature, and after that we'll move on to some Mephiston red. This is going to be for the face of the shield to give it a nice bright red for that heraldic feel. Now after that we need some greedy gold from the army painter for all the gold detail, and then we're going to paint a very small amount of Doomball brown from Citadel. This is just for the grip of the sword. Finally from Citadel we need some Zandri dust, and this is going to be for the trim and the lion detail that's on the tabard. But first of all we're going to be using some dried bark, for which I'm going to be applying it using my regiment brush once again from the Army Painter. As before, just get that paint ready, and then I'm ready to start picking out all the brown leather details on the miniature. So to begin with, what we want to look at doing is the trousers, at least the bit of it that's visible, just around here, which will separate that under tunic from the boots, seeing as both of those are black. There we go, so it's that detail around there. And also we want to paint in the leather belt. Now this of course goes around the front here and has a little pouch there that we also need to paint brown. But as you get around towards the back, there's the scabbard of the sword too, so be sure to get all of that. Finally, a little bit that's easy to miss is actually the strap that's holding the shield to the arm, and that is just on the inside just here. Next we're ready to paint the face of the shield using Mephiston Red, and don't worry about any of the gold details for now because we will be painting them next. Now, this is a really nice bright part for the miniature, a nice part for the heraldic colour just here, and it helps separate the shield from the rest of the uh, tabard as well. But if this colour is a little bit thin and you can see some of the greys showing through, just let it dry and apply a second thin coat. Thank you. 
Next, we're ready to start base coating all the gold detail. Now, I'm using Greedy Gold from the Army Painter here, but if you want to stick to Citadel, then Retributorama is a perfect colour as well. Now, this is for all things such as the trim, and of course, on the shield, we want to paint the lion that's in the centre here. You can see this paint's a little bit transparent, so just apply two thin coats to get to a strong finish before you move on. Now, as well as around here, there's a few gold details on the armour that we need to pick out, and you can see it's these raised areas that go around the plates that go over the uh, chest and around the shoulders. So for these, just follow these raised parts like this. Not worrying about being neat because of the plating just yet, because we are going to paint that silver later on, but do be careful about the red when you get close to it. There we go. Now also as well, we've got a few gold details to pick out on the sword. So that is the hilt. So we've got the cross guard along here and the pommel to do as well. And also on the back, we've got some gold details on the scabbard. With the gold applied, now is a great time to clean the water to make sure the gold doesn't contaminate any other colours, but then we're ready to move on to Doomball Brown. Now to begin with, this is for the grip of the sword, and on this particular pose for the miniature, there isn't actually much visible, it's just a little bit just here, but on other soldiers where the swords are sheathed, there'll be a much more of it visible, so it is important to paint it now. Also, however, this colour's great for painting in the hair of the miniature, which is what I'm going to do now as well. And finally, we need a little bit of Zandri dust. Now this is to begin with for the trim of the tabard around here. So you can see it goes all the way down here and around the back. And also there's a little bit visible on the under tunic, so we need to paint across there as well. Now this is a raised area, you can just use the side of your brush just to catch this detail and just run along it gently. Also, there's the lion on the chest here, so we need to pick this part out as well and the wood of the back of the shield too. Now one of the little detail to paint at this stage that I'm going to do is to paint the feather with this colour. But the feather's a great little opportunity to add a bit of variety to your units, and using a different colour on each one of those units looks great. So for this one I'm going to use Zandri Dust, but also black or red is a great choice for this feature. And there we are with that colour applied, we can now move on to the next stage which is to put a wash over the miniature to give it lots of depth and definition. Now of course we're not actually finished with all of our base coats yet because we've not painted the silver armour, but the reason why we're not doing that just yet is because we want to wash the silver with a different colour. We're going to wash that with black later to make it nice and clean, which for Lannis troops like this where you want to really show off their opulence and the quality of their gear, it's quite important to do that. So instead what we're going to do for now is apply a brown wash all over the miniature because the brown will be a really good shade for all the colours we've used so far. And I've chosen to use Agrax Earth shade for this, and to apply it, I've gone for a medium shade brush from Citadel, which is a really good size for the kind of area that we're covering just here. Now, like usual, I'm going to be using the palette here to help control how much I'm applying at once, but you can paint this straight out of the pot if you want to. But what we need to do is just load up a good amount on the brush and then paint it all over the miniature so it runs into all the recessed detail like that to give that depth and definition. And you can see that especially on areas such as the sleeves around there and when it goes over the gold as well. So what you need to do is paint this all over the miniature, keeping an eye on it to make sure it doesn't collect too much in any one area. For example, you can see it's doing so just there in that corner, so I'm just going to move the excess away like that before it dries. And this will take around about 45 minutes to dry, but it is important that it is completely dry before you move on to the next stage. And now that shade paint is completely dry, we can move on to painting all of the silver armour. So for this, what we're going to do is follow the same sort of sequence with a base coat followed by a shade. To base coat it, I'm going to be using gunmetal from the Army Painter, but you could use lead belcher from Citadel if you wanted to. But then I'm going to shade over the top of that using some Norn Oil from Citadel. So we're going to need to start out with some of that gunmetal then, and just need to get some of this onto the palette. There we go. And then to apply this, I'm going back to my medium layer brush from Citadel. Really good size now for the kind of smaller, finer details that we're doing for this. And what we need to do is just get a little bit of that loaded up. And it's just a matter of picking out all that plate armour and the sword blade. So I'm going to start just here on the van brace, and it's just a matter of being as neat as you can in between that gold trim. So you're just really taking your time painting up to it, but not over it. Same is true when it comes to the shoulder pauldrons, the gorget, the helmet, all these details like this, and of course the sword blade. Once that base coat's done, you're then ready to apply some Norn Oil all over the silver details. And you don't need loads of this, so I'm sticking to my medium layer brush to apply it, and you can see I'm just neatly painting it over the silver only. And there we are, I've now blocked in and shaded all the main colours of the model, but of course we've not painted the skin yet, and on some of these soldiers you can see their faces, so we need to paint that now. To do this we're going to use four paints from Citadel, and we're going to start out with a base coat of Bugman's Glow before shading all over the skin with a Reichland Flesh shade. After that we're going to layer it using Cadian Flesh Tone, and then highlight it with a little bit of Kislev Flesh. But first of all we've got to base coat it with Bugman's Glow, and so I'm going to stick to my medium layer brush to paint this in, and all we need to do is just get some of this ready, as always, just thin down ever so slightly, and then it's just a matter of base coating all of the skin, and you can see it's just in here, so be careful of the helmet and the hair as you apply this colour.
With the base coat done, we're then ready to paint Reichland Flesh Shade all over the skin to give it some warmth and depth. Once the shade is dry, we're ready to start picking out the details of the face. And for this switch to a smaller brush, I've gone for a detail brush from the Army Painter here. And with KD and Flesh Tone, what we need to do is to pick out the raised areas and avoid the recesses. So for this, I like to start with the nose. It's a good little waypoint for everything else in the face there like that. So just pick that out there. Then it's time to move on to the upper lip. So just go horizontally across it there. And then the lower lip just there. Then skip a bit to pick out the chin. There we go, you can see the expressions now starting to stand out because all we have to do after this is to start to fill in the cheeks. And so for this, just start up at the top of the cheekbone there like that, and then just bring it down either side of the face. And then we're ready to finish off the skin with a highlight of Kislev Flesh. And for this, all you need to do is start out by picking out the nose once more, which is a fine line of this colour so it stands out. Then we're going to go across the upper lip again, so just a little bit there. This time skip the lower lip so it's a little bit darker than the rest of the flesh. And then just pick out the cheek, uh, the chin just there like that. With that done, we then just need to do the cheekbones. And for this, it's just a matter of painting a small amount just up here. And then going a little bit down the side towards the mouth. And there we are, the face is now complete, which you can see adds loads of personality to the miniature. But all the washers earlier on have dulled down the colours quite a bit on the miniature. So what we need to do now is to return to some of these and reapply them a little bit more selectively now to start to brighten the miniature back up again. So we're going to relayer some colours now, starting out with corn red that we did originally for the red parts, or the deep red parts really of the tabard. Then we're going to move on to Mephiston red for the shield and repeat this technique. After that, using some gun metal, we're going to go back to the silver plates of the armour. And then finally, we're going to do the same with a little bit of Zandri dust. But first of all we need corn red and this time I'm going to be sticking to my medium layer brush to apply this right from the start. And what we're looking to do is again get it diluted just as we did in the first stage. But just twist your brush to get rid of the excess paint and bring the bristles to a nice tip. And then as we apply it this time we're looking for the recessed areas where that shade paint settled and basically we're going to avoid them. So if we take a look at say for example on the front of this corner here we got on the front. What I'm going to do is paint into the flat area in the middle but not go right into the corners so that I retain the shading as it moves up to and meets the other colours. So this way you keep the depth in there. Now as you go around look for any creases or wrinkles in the fabric. So there's one just here where it just be next to that scabbard. What I'm going to do is just go either side of it so it stays darker in the recessed area like that. With that done, we can then repeat this technique on the face of the shield with Mephiston Red. As before, just painting onto the flatter areas and not going quite into the corners where it meets the gold. Next, we can move on to the silver armour by returning to gun metal. And once again, we're looking to paint this over most of the armour, just avoiding those recessed areas. And you can see this gives a lovely shine to that armour, makes it nice and polished. And then finally we're going to return to Zandri Dust. Now this is going to be for the lion that we have on the chest just here. All we need to do is paint a small amount of this onto this just to bring out the detail of it and the shape of it, just to help it stand out a little bit. But also if like me you've done the feather with this colour then we need to do a layer on that as well. Of course if you've chosen a different colour for the feather then you'll want to return to the original one. But the technique is the same. What you do is just paint some lines following the length of the feather, these strands we've got on it like that, just to help bring out the texture. I finished layering those colours now and the Guardsman looks great. In fact, you could leave it here if you wanted to and just move on to basing it. But if you want to make it stand out a little bit more, we're now going to show you how to highlight it. So you might want to do this on all your Guardsmen or maybe just the Captains, it's entirely up to you. But to do it, what we're going to do is start out by highlighting that main deep red on the miniature. And for this, we need some Wazdaka red from Citadel. And to apply this, you need your finer brush again. I've got my detail brush from the Army Paint for this. And what we need to do is again, use the palette to get the paint ready. But the real key thing here is to make sure you've diluted it enough so that it's flowing smoothly off the brush. So a little bit more water than we have been doing. You can always test it on the palette to see how well it flows. And you see that's running from the brush really nice and easily there. The next thing to do is just twist off the excess paint off the bristles like that to bring them to a nice point. So this way you have much more control and can do thinner lines 
there like that. And so what we're going to do now is to look for all the creases on the fabric and to pick them out to help them stand out a bit more. And on this particular pose, the most obvious ones are actually on his back around about here. So you can see there's some creases here. What I'm going to do is just paint a little bit of this colour following the top of them. So just along there and along there and going up the side there like that, just to help them stand out a little bit more. Now also this miniature has those slashes on the sleeve, so what we're going to do is help pick those out a little bit more too. And for this you just need to go on either side where they meet the black. So for example, just down there and down there and along the little rim that we've got along the bottom just here. And with that highlight applied you can see it gives just much more body and shape to that red fabric. And because this is the main part of the model, the main part of the colour scheme, what we're going to do now is add a second highlight to it just to bring it out a little bit further. Now for this I'm going to be using Squig Orange and again I'm going to use my detail brush for this. And we only want a very small amount of this because we don't want to make the colour of the fabric too orangey. So it's just a very small amount just to finish it off. So you need to get a little bit ready in your palette and just a little bit of it on your brush. And what we're going to do now is look for the most prominent areas on the red of the highlights that we've done so far and just add a little bit of this to them to make them stand out more. So a great example would be that crease there that we picked out earlier on where it's at that sharpest point there where they kind of intersect. What I'm going to do is paint a very small amount of this colour there like that just to make it pop out a little bit more. Now when it comes to the slashes and the sleeves again we're looking for where it stands out more so you can see how it kind of balloons out the side there. It's a little bit where it sticks out the most there like that. I finished applying that fine highlight now and you can see just how much shape it gives to all that red fabric. It looks really nice and now we're going to move on to adding some highlights to the other colours on the miniature too. Now to begin with we need some Mechanica Standard Grey for all the black details in the model, followed by a bit of Gawthor Brown which will be used for all that brown leather. Now after that we need a little bit of Evelson Scarlet for some detail on the shield and then finally some Liberator Gold of course for highlighting all the gold on the miniature. But first of all we want some Mechanica Standard Grey and I'm going to be following the same technique as what we've just done. So again it's a case of looking for all the peaks on the black detail and just picking them out with a little bit of this colour. So you won't need very much of this. Again prepared just like before, still using that detail brush from the Army Painter. And on all these black areas then we just need to look at what stands out. So on the gloves for example of course the fingers and thumb stand out so we want just a little bit of this colour just going along the raised areas of them there like that. And on the back of them you can add some shape to it by just following back from the knuckles. So a little bit along there like that. Then when it comes to the boots we want to of course go around this top area that's standing out so just all the way around like that. And then when it comes to the feet at the bottom down here you can see some creases in it so we just want to pick those out so just along there and along there and around the end towards the toes so just a little bit around there like that. If you have any other parts standing out then pick them out too. Sometimes there'll be some creases on this part just here and sometimes you'll get little bits inside the slashes and the sleeves as well like just there for example. Next we're ready to highlight all the brown leather using some Gawthor Brown and on the trousers just a little bit here where it creases around the knee so just there and then of course we've got to do the belt and for this it's going to be all the way around and the scabbard as well. Next up we need a little bit of Evelson Scarlet for the shield. Now not all of the shields are going to need this but you can see on this one there's a central ridge running down the middle there. All I'm going to do is run a bit of this colour just along the very top of it. And then finally use Liberator Gold to highlight all the gold detail. And this stands out very prominently so it's actually very easy to use the side of your brush and just skim along these edges like this to get a nice neat sharp highlight. And with that highlight applied the miniature is very nearly finished. In fact we've just got three more paints to go. First of all we need some Ashabdi Bone from Citadel to do a highlight on all that trim and a line of the chest and the feather in our case as well. And then we're going to move on to a little bit of Skeleton Bone from the Army Painter to finish those details off with a fine highlight. Finally we just need a small amount of Shining Silver from the Army Painter to complete all the silver plate armour. But first of all we need a Ashabdi Bone and I'm going to be returning to my detail brush from the Army Painter to apply this because we really don't need very much of this. Again use the palette to make sure the paint is diluted, there we go so it's nice and thin, and then just make sure your brush isn't overloaded. Just use the palette to get rid of the excess paint there like that. And then what we're looking to do is just pick out these details such as the trim, the line and the feather. And when it comes to the trim all you need to do is very lightly skim your brush using the side across that raised texture like that to get a fine highlight 
just running all the way around like that. And same is true for the under tunic. You can see the bit there. Again, just very gently pick it out, but leave the recess there a little bit darker so you get some texture and definition there. As for the line, what we've got to do is just go around the outside edge of it. So just, again, very lightly, just skim your brush around it like that, just to pick out the raised details like that. And as for the feather, what we need to do is just follow along the lines that are going down the length of it. So just like this. And then add a fine highlight of skeleton bone from the army paint to these details, this time just focus on the sharper areas. So on the outline we've got of the, uh, the coat just here, we're just looking at the corners down here for example, just skimming it lightly at the bottom there and lightly down there just for that sharpness just to finish that off. On the line on the chest it's going to be around the paws, so these little ends of the details such as just there. And when it comes to the feather we want to again just follow along the texture of it. So in this case it's going to be just looking towards the end of the feather just here and painting some lines just following along those raised areas that we picked out earlier. And finally we're ready to highlight all that silver detail using Shining Silver from the Army Painter. And once again you just follow the raised parts and all the sharpest details. Now if you're using Citadel paints then Stormhost Silver is a great alternative for this, but you'll see this just really finishes off that bright polished steel armour. Now once you've done this all you've got to do is base your miniature, and as always it's entirely up to you how you base your model. I'm going to go for a grasslands base though to represent the riverlands in Westeros. And with the base now fully painted, this Lannister Guardsman is complete, ready to take to the field in the War of the Five Kings in defence of the most amazing king, Joffrey Baratheon. So when you're painting your miniatures like this, you'll notice that we use two different washers on it. And this was for a very particular purpose on these models, because with Lannisters we want to have the opulence and wealth visible on there. So we use the brown wash on the gold details to give them lots of richness and depth. When you're applying this though, be careful not to get it onto the silver details, as you want to keep those as clean as possible. But that's the key thing to remember, so we really hope you enjoyed this video, and perhaps you'll have a go at painting some Lannisters yourself. We'll see you all again very soon.